Well, good morning. <laughs> this morning we are here out in the boonies, out in the wilderness. <laughs> yes, we are. And uh, we've been having, Paul, we've been having this summer of power where we've been talking about the power of God all summer. We started off by talking about uh, the power struggle. We talked about the power to save. We talked about the power that comes from our position, which we were talking about as sons and daughters, so the power of sonship. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about the power of grace, the power to sustain, and this morning... Well, not, no, and we talked about the power to serve uh, oh, last week. Oh, the power to serve. Yes. Forgot that one. That's a powerful one, too. Yes, it is. Uh, but here we are. We're on vacation. Yes. And we're um, up in northern Ontario. And well, yeah, it's in the Muskokas. We're at our friend's cottage. And uh, we just uh, thought this would be a great place to shoot our Sunday morning video. And uh, because if yes. you look behind us, I you have to look probably really close, but they're power lines. <laughs> yes, this is uh, so. <laughs> this would be uh, an opening, uh, a cut through the trees, was as commonly known, uh, referred to as a hydro cut. Yeah, where they uh, they uh, make a, a swath through the trees for hydro lines to run, and so these are power lines that you can barely see behind us. Yeah, and then uh, they come up over here. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they're not the huge huge uh not the big towers that you see in some places but uh, nonetheless they are providing power for this area and so anyway we just want to welcome you and thank you for joining us again this morning and uh, trust that as we spend this time together that uh, it will be a time of encouragement a time of blessing and that uh, we can all draw closer to our lord jesus christ and our relationship with him and be spurred on in in uh, in our faith and in our journey as we uh, as we share together. And so, as we sit here under these power lines and in this hydro cut, where the uh, somebody um, some years ago I don't know when the, when the history of this area as to when this happened, but this uh, these power lines were put through here because you know one of the big deals uh, for people who want to build a cottage or a, a place of residence uh, anywhere, but especially up here where you're building it more in the wilderness, you know, in the, not in the, in the populated areas, uh, is, is how are we going to get power to our property? And uh, that is, that is a big deal. And so I'm fascinated with hearing stories, you know, uh, there's stories of, of cottages that are uh, built on islands and, and uh, somehow the, the power uh, is, is brought out to the island eventually, or they, they build, um, uh, you know, sometimes people build uh, in remote areas, build uh, a home or a cottage that would be sort of technically off the grid where it has its own um, power its source. Home power source, yeah. yeah like whether that's solar power or a generator mm -hmm. of some sort with batteries or yeah, um, yeah. Well, anyway. However, they do that yeah. all. There's yeah. there's technology for that. Yes, but anyway, but that is is the big deal in 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 all of these things is because every place wants to have a source of power, and so so even in um, spending time here at our friend's cottage, I'm. I'm scouting out and trying to figure out how the power lines came down uh, to the cottage from uh, from the uh, hydro lines. There's actually another set of hydro lines just a little bit closer to the cottage uh, that the source f feeds the, the actual uh, cottages that are right along this stretch of, yeah. of the river. But well, that's um, what we think we figured out. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and it you know it got us thinking about our lives and how power is really, uh, uh, you know, power to live, power to carry on is, is really a crucial thing. We want to be connected. So, so like these cottages um, that are all along this river, they have a power source and, and all throughout the Muskokas, um, it's been figured out how to get power to each one of these places. And, uh, and so they're connected. They're connected and so you know you can have lights you can have um, uh, some heat you can have uh, uh, just whatever you you know a lot of the normal things that we experience in in the city <laughs> within uh, within a lot of these uh, structures right you have running water you have you know and it all comes because you have a power source and you're connected and so so as our um, you know as as followers of Jesus uh, 
we want to be connected to the power source. And, and we spent some time back in May talking about uh, when the Holy Spirit came because Jesus, you know, at the end of his, his uh, life here on earth, uh, before he ascended up into heaven, he told his disciples, well, yeah, actually, even before he was crucified, before his death, he told them that he is going to be leaving them and it's actually going to be better for them when he's gone. And and I know we had talked about that before, but I just want to highlight that again because I'm thinking that as his followers, if if you're standing there or you're sitting there listening to him say that, you're just like, man, how is this possible? Like you're right here with us. We love you. We 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 worship you. We wanna we wanna be with you, but you're gonna leave us and it's somehow gonna be better. How could that possibly be? And and so then uh, then he was crucified and they, they were just like, Oh, now he's died and and what is going on? And then he rose from the dead, so their hope came, you know, came back to life. It's like, oh he's back, he's back <laughs> and he's with us again. And then uh, 40 days, uh, it was 40 days, right? From the time of his resurrection till his ascension? 50. 50 days, 50 days. Oh no, 40 days 40. till the ascension. Another 10 days till the Holy Spirit. Till the Pentecost, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah I yeah, thought sorry. that's the way it was. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so in Acts chapter 1, uh, we have Jesus standing there, um, you know, just before he's ascended up into heaven. And he tells his the people who are gathered around him there, his disciples, and, and he says... He says that you are to wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. And then he says, um, so, so, so go do that. And then he says, but you shall receive, and this is Acts 1.8, he says, but you shall receive power and you will be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so, so what Jesus was telling them is basically that you are now going to be connected to a source of power that is going to propel you to carry this message of the kingdom, uh, which is what Jesus brought when he came, uh, was the, the message of the kingdom of God, that it is here, that it is, it is right within our reach. And, and then he went about healing and, and, um, and preaching and teaching the good news that, uh, that God loves you and that he wants you to, to be free from sin and he wants to deliver you from the oppression of the evil one and he wants to heal your body he wants to heal your heart he wants to just heal us body soul and spirit and and so the the message of the kingdom that jesus uh started at the beginning of his ministry was was what we are to carry on as his followers and he's telling them you're going to start in Judea. That's right where you are. Then you're going to, and it's going to expand a little further. And then it's going to go to the ends of the earth. And that is exactly what has happened since, since that time. Uh, they went back then. Uh, Jesus then ascended up into heaven, was taken away right before their eyes. And, uh, and they were standing there like, oh, you know, I, and I've said this before too. I, I, it's like if I would have been there, I would have been like looking up into the sky. And I was like, Jesus, come on, come on. You're not leaving us now, are you? Come on back, come on back. And then, you know, it says that uh, two men dressed in white uh, appeared before them and said, men of uh, Galilee, I think, or I think is how it was worded. But anyway, they're saying, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus who you saw go up like this is going to come back again someday. And so... So the early church lived with this fervent expectation that Jesus was going to return at any moment. And, and you know, we still want to have that expectation here 2,000 years later that at some point Jesus is going to return. And, and you know, in the midst of that, you know, here we are so many years later, we, we need to understand that God's um, understanding of time is not, you know, the way that we think of it. And I think that we need to understand too that there, God's plan in that is that he wants to empower his people, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, there's something for us to do mm -hmm. here on this earth. There's things that he has for us to do. And so he wants to empower us to do those things, right? right? And so I'm, you know, I'm thinking about, um, you know, Jesus came and he came into the Jewish culture. Mm -hmm. He came into that system that God had, um, a special relationship with with the nation of Israel and and so he revealed himself um, and in that setting 
You know, there were times when, when Jesus would say, well, I'm sent to the lost sheep of Israel. He knew that he was to start his ministry there. There was something that he needed to do, that the God's people, these special people that had this special covenant with God, they were the first to hear mm -hmm. of that message. It was through that system. But then what happened after they were filled with the Holy Spirit in, in Pentecost, um, there was some revelation that came. First, um, first came to um, Saul, who became Paul, mm -hmm. on the road to Damascus, where, 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 where he was persecuting the church. He was persecuting these followers of the way who were, um, in essence, the Jewish people who mm -hmm. had accepted Jesus, right? They were part of the Jewish, uh, that, that was their background, that was their ethnicity, that was their culture. And, um, and so he's persecuting them. He's on the road to Damascus. And what happens? Jesus shows up, bright light from heaven, aligns him and says, why are you persecuting me? Well, Paul didn't know Jesus. He just didn't like what was happening because it was outside of how he'd been taught in his religious system. Mm -hmm. And suddenly he has this encounter with Jesus. And through this encounter with Jesus, Jesus says, you know what, Paul, um, Saul, <laughs> we're gonna, you're going to be known as Paul. And you're going to take this beyond the Jewish. Mm -hmm. You know, you're well versed in understanding the scriptures. You're well versed. And now I'm going to take it to the Gentiles mm -hmm. and I'm going to use you as an instrument to spread my good news mm -hmm. to the nations. And around the same time, Peter has that vision from heaven where he's in a trance and, and he sees that what had been um, kosher, what had been forbidden for the Jewish people to eat. He has this vision where the Lord says, go and eat. And he's like, I can't eat that. <laughs> that's, that's not part of this system. And, and Jesus said, no. And so he understood then when Cornelius' men came, Cornelius was a centurion of the Roman army. So he was not Jewish. They, the Jews did not associate that way with, with those from the other nations, with the Gentiles. Uh, he knew he was to go with them and share with them the message of salvation, the message that Jesus had come to save us from our sins. And suddenly this became beyond. Now it's beyond um, the Jewish nation. It has gone to the nations. Mm -hmm. And that was always God's heart. Yeah. You know, there's the verses that talk in Psalms about um, that the, the nations are in his, his inheritance. Not just one nation, the nations. That includes all of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that includes all of us. And so we have um, a job to do, and that's representing Jesus. And yeah. we have the power to do that through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. there's uh, parts in the New Testament that talk about how we're ambassadors. Uh, we are representatives. <laughs> that's what an ambassador is when, you know, the ambassador of Canada goes to another nation. Uh, they are representing Canada to that nation. And so as... as um, uh, as, as God's ambassadors, uh, we are bringing the message of Jesus' love uh, and his death and his resurrection and his sacrifice for the sins of the world uh, everywhere we go. And we are representing him to the people that we meet. And, and we're not left to do that on our own. That is the beauty of all of this, is that he promised in Acts 1-8 that you're going to receive power and then you're going to be my witnesses. He doesn't go out and say, uh, it doesn't get it the other way around where it says just go out and start telling people and you know eventually there's going to be some power that's going to come and uh, enable you to do that no it was first there was this this infilling uh, you know in Acts chapter 2 it talks about how when the spirit came and how there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind and and it was just this incredible dramatic experience uh, that that happened to those people and um and they and in that first day it says three thousand were added to that number as peter who just a, a, a few weeks earlier uh, at jesus crucifixion had denied jesus three times and now he's standing up boldly uh you know i heard somebody say it once he used to be chicken little and now all of a sudden the holy spirit came on him and he and he is acting like leo lion he's <laughs> standing up and he's leading the charge he's like this is is uh, what has happened you crucified jesus who was the messiah he raised from the dead and now he's ascended into heaven and he and the holy spirit uh, the very spirit of god has come in power to dwell within each one of us and is enabling us to uh tell you uh, and to demonstrate the the signs and wonders of the kingdom of god 
so that you can believe. And so that is still what can happen uh, in each one of us as followers of Jesus as we get connected to that power source. You know, I was thinking, Angie, of these cottages all along all along the river. The cottage we're staying at is, uh, I think it would be called the Severn River. It's part of the, the Trent Severn Waterway, which is rather intriguing because, you know, you can go um, really in either direction um, and never stop. Well, uh, it's, uh, we were told that there are people in the southern states who just take the rivers all the way up here. Yeah, yeah, and there's, boats, and there's right, and so, and then here, we, yeah, we've seen them with the American flags, American but flag. maybe not right now. Yeah, but, not, um... not this year. Maybe another time when we were here. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, it's it's quite an intriguing network of uh, um, a waterway network, I guess we could put it. But but every all the cottages along here and all throughout the muskokas you know they all have a power source as i was uh saying at the beginning uh and so so as they're connected they have uh, an actual connection that brings the power in and then all the wires and everything that that cause everything to run the way uh the way that it normally should but you know if you never turn on the switch if you never uh activate that power uh, you could be in that house and you could be connected. You could have it all at your disposal and you'd be thinking, oh man, if only we just had power. Um, and well, I think there are some around here that there are some cottages that maybe don't have power because well, they're, they're accessed by river and, uh, you know, and some of them actually yeah, maybe are connected. Yeah, possibly we don't know all. A little bit all, more rugged. We don't know how it, how it all works <laughs> or, or the stories of all the places along yeah, here, but yeah. most of them you know, have uh, have some sort, some form of power. Yeah. But you can be connected, you can have that power at your disposal, but if we don't actually like turn on the switch, if we don't like release that power into the dwelling, uh, it's of no use, even though it is right there at our disposal. And so that is the invitation for you and I, that, uh, that we have that access to that power because the Holy Spirit has come. And, uh, and so we call out, to God, we call out each and every day, Father, come, come and fill me with your power, your Holy Spirit, so that I will have uh, the, 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 exactly what I need to accomplish your purposes for today. You know, God's power has come and it is a blessing in your life, for, it's available for your life and for mine, and it is available for today. There is enough power uh, available for all that we need to accomplish each and every day. And you know, Angie, we did this um, this two minute video that uh, uh, while we're here, and I think people have already seen that, but it was about this this little acorn. And, uh, and you shared the story about um, a fellow we know who we listened to preach. Excuse me, he was um, out in a tree stand hunting and he heard an acorn drop and God spoke to him and said, what did you hear, Bobby? And Bobby said, why? Well, I heard an acorn. Did you see? Or what an did acorn. you see? Yeah. I saw an acorn. And, and the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, that's the difference between you and me, Bobby, is you saw an acorn, but I see a forest. And that is the potential uh, that God sees in in, in each one of us. You know, we see uh, the, the limited... Uh, uh, interactions that we have with people or, or or just that oh well I can't really do much for God but God sees the potential uh, in each and every one of us because each one of us can be sowing seeds each day wherever we go and there's incredible power in seed because it multiplies many times over and so that is is what God sees when he sees this acorn he sees a forest and so I shared the verse in that video and I want to share it here it's from uh, Ephesians chapter 3 I think it starts around verse 18 or 19 where it says um, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we can ask or imagine and how does that happen it says well according to his power that is at work within each one of us and so God's power is at work in you and I and as we surrender our lives to him uh, we say yes to him and we, we invite the, the power of the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. We, it's like being in one of these cottages and turning on the switch. All of a sudden, wow, 
we got lights. We got, you know, we got uh, some options right. that we didn't have because before. Because this is this is a fairly remote area. Like um, it, <laughs> to get here, it's it's quite quite the journey. Quite, uh, yeah. You know, on, a, uh, you on know, a narrow on, gravel road. Uh, unless you're coming in by boat, right? Uh, you know, and it, it's got me thinking more about, you know, here we are in this remote place. We're in this wilderness place. And, you know, we find ourselves in these wilderness places sometimes. And we need to have, oops, we need to have um, the eyes to see, right? So mm -hmm. how do we see the circumstances around us? You know, I'm writing a book <laughs> for a long time, hope to finish it this fall, about, it's called the Wilderness Training Manual. And it's talking about the wilderness journeys that we take with God because there's a process that he wants to do in our hearts um, when we go through wilderness seasons. And so this, this place is just kind of a picture of that, right? And, and so I want to share with you kind of a story from, um, from the Old Testament, from the time when the children of Israel were in the desert, where they were in the wilderness. And God had a process. He was taking them from slavery in Egypt and he was taking them to the promised land. This was the land that was promised to them. It was promised to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And here it was, he was bringing that promise to fruition. They were gonna enter into this land that was promised to them. But what did they need? I mean, they needed a few things, but what I wanna talk about right now is they needed eyes to see. Eyes to see that they would be empowered by God because he promised. So he would be faithful but, but they needed to stand in agreement. They needed to see from a certain perspective and that's through the eyes of faith. Mm -hmm. And that's also how we need to operate. You know, they came up to that boundary when they were to enter into the land. They had sent out um, the, the 12 spies, one from each of the tribes of Israel. They had come back and what had happened? Two, only two of those 12. So we had two that had eyes to see they said oh it's a good land i mean they all came back they said it's a good land um it's a land flowing with milk and honey it's a land like look at the big fruit that we've brought back huge but there's also giants right so it was the same message but it was the attitude of the heart that went with the message so the two caleb and joshua came back and they said it's great land let's go in and take it the lord's more than able to give us this land and the other 10 said oh no 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 there's huge giants there and we cannot accomplish that they're gonna cut us down mow us down and decimate us you know and so how do we view things if God has given us promises how do we see ourselves in the, in the mm -hmm. midst of that do we see ourselves as small or do we see ourselves as more than able if he supplies the power that we need to face every situation that comes our way and so we need those eyes to see mm -hmm. um, as we move forward in all that God has for us. Right, and faith gives us the perspective that we need to have in those kinds of situations. You know, Angie, when um, when they came back, they said, the, the 10 doubters, the 10 that gave the bad report, they said about these big giants and that we were like grass, we looked like grasshoppers in their eyes. Well, how did how did they know that? Did they, did these giants say, hey, you, you look like a grasshopper? <laughs> Um, no, I think probably it was just what they began to believe about themselves that, that, Hey, Oh, these guys are so big. We must look like grasshoppers to them. And, and so, and you know, it was a false, it was a false, it was a lie mm -hmm. they were believing because they had to go back mm -hmm. and they had to circle around that desert mm -hmm. for another 38 years to, for the 40 years to be fulfilled before they came. And it was the next generation then that entered mm -hmm. into the promise. And, but you know what Joshua then took over after Moses and, and he sent out the two spies and what did they hear when they went in? Mm -hmm. Rahab says, we're all trembling in fear because we know what your God has done. Mm -hmm. We know what you're, we're all trembling in fear, you know? So she makes an agreement with them. I'll hide you, but you need to save my family mm -hmm. when you come in and take the land. Cause I know you're going to do it. I know your God is more powerful than ours. And so, um, and so that report and what they projected people were thinking, probably not. Probably for 40 years, they were thinking these people are going to come again sometime and we're going to be. Right. But the people, 
by and large believe the report of the 10, uh, 10 doubters. Because and, that's what was and in the, their And heart. they began to believe it as true. And so that reminds me, Angie, we were listening to this um, podcast kind of thing uh, this week while we were, while we've been here. And, uh, and they said in this podcast, they said, you know, it's not what you don't know that, um, that is killing you or is preventing you from, from moving forward or, or, you know, really fulfilling your dreams and vision, uh, the dreams, visions and hopes for your life. It's not what you don't know that's preventing that from happening. It's what you do know that isn't true and that you've believed as true. So in other words, it's the lies that we believe as true in our lives that, uh, that keep us from moving forward. And that's exactly what happened there. Uh, these guys came back with that report and, and it was a lie, but they believed it as true. And it sent fear out into the camp. Yep. And so none of them wanted, yep. it's just like, we're not going to do it. And said, we, we have no hope here. So we're not even going to try to advance. And so I just, uh, wanted to share that today because, you know, we, that's still the same issue that we have is what do we believe to be true? Is it actual truth? Is it actually, uh, you know, t tapping into the potential and, and the God-given gifts and, and the power of God working in us with what we can accomplish in this life? Or have we just settled for way less than what, um, than what is possible because we have believed a lie mm -hmm. and we have thought that that is true? Well, you know, I, I don't really have, there's not really much in me. I, I'm just kind of going to coast through life and try to you know, be happy in the midst of it or whatever. And I think uh, but, but, but we are called to so much more. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's, it's not that we got to conjure all of it up on our own, but no, it's as we, we flip that switch, we're connected with the power and all of a sudden the lights come on and we can, we can function and we can live and become all that God has called us to be. And through all of that, then we are his witnesses in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We are his witnesses right where we are, and then it, it, it expands, and then it goes all the way to the ends of the earth. Because, you know, as we plant seeds, as you plant this kind of little seed, who knows what it's going to, how it's going to reproduce and multiply, and the effect of how that is going to be. Uh, you know, I, I remember hearing the story of, um, of the fella who uh, led Billy Graham to Jesus. And, uh, you know, I don't know all of the details. I can't even remember the guy's name, but say for example, that, uh, maybe in all of that man's life, that that was the only person he led to Jesus. I don't know if that is true or not. Uh, I don't know the whole story, but let's just say, for example, that maybe that is the case. And, you know, somebody, he could feel like, wow, I haven't really done much in my life. I've only led one person to Jesus, but then look at what happened after that the multiplication and then as billy graham uh you know responded to the call of god in his life to preach the gospel all around the world and the millions and millions and millions of people that have been brought into the kingdom uh, through the ministry uh, of billy graham and and so you know we don't want to just think small and think limited we want to somehow have the eyes to see the way god sees it and that, that there's multiplication that happens and it all comes because we're connected to the power source. Right. If we're led by the Spirit, there will be fruit. Mm -hmm. Right? There will be. And so we don't want to underestimate any connections that we have or anything that we do when we're, when we're connected to the Spirit and we feel that urging that we need to speak to this person or we need to pray for this person or whatever. Just go with those. Mm -hmm. You know, because you don't know what all that will produce. Well, you know, this week we head into a change of seasons. It's going to be fall. And right now we're actually in Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's times when there's a changing of the season, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're heading out of summer. We're heading into fall. And I, I chose the song today, New Day, New Way, because we there are new days. There are new seasons that we enter into. And there's new ways of walking. Mm -hmm. 
with the Lord because he wants to continue to bring revelation and understanding to our heart. So that may change the way we do things. That may change the way we relate to people. That may change the way we relate with God because ultimately it's really about our relationship with him and that connection with him where that allows that, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to flow and that power to flow um, in us and through us That's right. to and others. You know, Angie, in your song, you sang about the new day, the new way, and I don't know where this road goes. I don't know where this road ends, but I know you're leading me. And that is the beauty of this journey. Uh, we don't always know what the road ahead is bringing us or where it is going or where, where it ends, but we know who is leading us. And that is the one who provides us with the power to live and follow him each and every day. And so we just want to... Um, uh, end this time together today with a prayer and that it would be that uh, God would come and he would he would meet each one of us in a special way and fill us each again afresh and anew with the power of his Holy Spirit so that we could follow him so father we are so grateful for your love for us thank you that we can be out here today in the beauty of your creation and uh, and just be surrounded by uh, the awesomeness of of the things that you have created and that uh, we can enjoy that here on this earth uh, thank you for blessing us with that and Lord we we just thank you most of all for Jesus who came to die for our sins to be the perfect sacrifice to make a way for us to be restored into relationship with you as our loving father and thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit to dwell within us and so father right now I just pray for all those who are watching that you would come by the power of your spirit and you would fill each one afresh and anew with your holy spirit right now that we would have the power to walk out um, uh, daily in the, this journey that we're on as followers of jesus that we could be a part of extending your kingdom uh, declaring the good news of the kingdom to everyone that we meet and we could see many many more brought into the kingdom of god and so, Father, we just thank you. We ask that you would fill us afresh and anew each and every day. And we thank you that to you who can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to the power that is at work within us, to you be the glory forever and ever in Christ Jesus and in the church throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us this morning um, from the beautiful remote area in the Muskoka's here where we are and until we meet again stay awake and stay alert <laughs>